if I'm going to the border one day and I it's based on seasonal average, that doesn't make me very comfortable, personally. Um, but all of our efforts right now are on the recreational primary contact side. Nothing on the shelf or something. I would just add to what Wayne said that, you know, when you're talking about the recreation standards, you're really talking about the bathing season. So you're really talking about the summer months. When you're looking to protect um, for the shellfish, you're really looking year-round. And um, you're looking at the most adverse conditions. So you're not going to be looking at a seasonal average. You know, so keep that in mind as well. And I think the two are really, you know, sort of decoupled. You can address the um, swimmable part and sort of be done. But then you've got to go back and you've got to look at the, the fishable part. Even if you had the strictest interpretation of the beach act and draw cockeye numbers, um, you know, for swimmable, that's not going to guarantee the fishable part. So you really then do have to look at those fishable numbers separately because it, it's a, a different um, exposure, they're different organisms. Um, so the two really are two separable problems. Another water quality question here it has to do with nitrogen. I want to know how, how do you measure nitrogen reduction by the oysters and their contribution to it and uh, the impact of sediment? In answering that, I can refer to work that was done in Long Island Sound um, rather than New York Harbor. Basically, um, oysters, clams, other bivalves have been well studied. What is known about these organisms is their filtration rate, the rate at which they take in water and remove particles from the water. So if you know the concentration of nitrogen in the water and you know how much the organism filters, you know how much nitrogen that organism is taking out of the water column. So now the organism has helped you move the nutrient from the water column into that organism. But it doesn't stop there because that organism is going to have um, its own respiration rates. There's going to be some recycle. Um, in some cases of aquaculture where the organism is specifically removed, you are in fact um, removing the nitrogen with that organism. Um, there have been a number of um, pilot studies in different places with aquaculture type placements and optimized densities where they have seen um, a removal. We did a calculation um, for Long Island Sound where if you put in organisms in aquaculture densities in approved um, waters, you could mimic in some cases the removals that you get from reductions of loadings. So it could possibly be a strategy for um, taking less nitrogen out through um, more construction and treatment plants or non-point source runoff controls and having the organisms instead. Um, so it is a viable self-sustaining um, alternative. <coughs> Those types of um, calculations, though, have not um, been done in New York, New Jersey, Harbor. And you have to have the proper substrate for the organisms. They have to have the proper light climate. You know, all, all the rules apply. You have to be able to place the organisms in areas where they, they can survive and um, grow optimally for that to work. Okay. Um, South Carolina, they have done some studies you know, since places with a filtering system. Much of, what they, much of what they take in, they also then put back out. But about 20% of the nitrogen is caught up in the pseudofeces, and that gets locked up in the sediments uh, underneath the oyster reef. Um, so there are some numbers, but again, that's a you know, that's not to be say not to say that if you had an oyster reef, the 20% of the nitrogen is removed. It's just saying that in this one small project or pilot. They did uh, quantify about 20% of this uh, time of the superfaces. Yeah. I would just add that I mentioned earlier that the foundation has an RFP on the street to, to look at the uh, ecosystem services, including the, uh, the nitrogen um, processing. And we have had some interest from some outside researchers to try to study that specifically on the reef. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely complicated. But, uh, we would be hopeful, hopefully we'll, we'll get closer to that answer um, you know, by next year. We have two questions from the Lower Raritan River in Oyster, which is especially speaking of the same handwriting. But, um, <laughs> is there any, uh, any plans to do anything in terms of Oyster in the Lower Raritan and talk about water quality in general there? Uh, sure. Right now, because of the ban, 
effort into permits, into you know the other side of this story for us is we um, Shrewsbury River, which is um, also you know part of the, the system here, a little bit on the outskirts. Um, we were directed to an area by the water quality folks at New Jersey Deep in the last year for a reef site. We put a lot of time and money to write the permit, submitted it, and it was denied this summer. So, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling kind of burned about doing oyster projects in New Jersey, um, especially with this, the, the new DEP uh, commissioner and staff that's in, in place right now. Now, that doesn't mean to say, you know, what we've been asking New Jersey is to provide some leadership on other shellfish projects in, in the harbor. They keep pointing us to tell us to do mussels and other things like that, but they're not providing any guidance or meaningful dialogue about what that looks like, where that could go. Um, and until they really step up and show me that they're committed to doing that, I hesitate to invest our resources into something that might be not feasible. So for right now, the Lower Raritan, unfortunately, is under that ban from the department. I'm going to guess I had you said you said to me. Well, it's more of a question, actually, to people here. I said, I wonder, what, what's the political point of intervention with New Jersey on this? And, um, you know, is it something that an opinion piece or, um, I mean, who, who are we trying to convince here? Well, that, you know, that, that's a great question. Um, it, it did come out of the Commissioner Martin, the Department of Environmental Protection, and I, and I you know, the Christie administration in New Jersey, I think, as everyone recognizes, is making a point of taking a stance and sticking to that stance. And it's very difficult to move them off of it, be it the art tunnel or, you know, the little pilly oysters. Um, you know, I think just this morning, Dennis Sikowski from HRF was, yeah, we have a meeting with you, Commissioner. He's like, well, you know where I stand. So, yeah. <laughs> so you know. But I do think, in this sense, at your point, um, the more you can talk about the economics, about why oysters are important and why restoring the harbor is important, the more the Christie administration and the staff will, I think, want to play ball. And I, to me, that's the way we're trying to understand how to frame it. And I think any sort of, you know, when this is happening this summer, we had a numerous op-eds. But the other point about is regionalizing the conversation. And New Jersey, you know, if it, you know, New York can make New Jersey look bad, you know, I'm not advocating for that. <laughs> but, you know, I think the more that outside folks put pressure on New Jersey and say, you guys are crazy. More that gets to them. So I would encourage folks to, to continue doing that, especially in New York media outlets, letters, or op eds. It's very helpful to have some kind of external pressure to make this state look bad. Come back to the big picture again. Earlier, Dennis Skowski quoted Mark Lansky in his book saying that New Yorkers lost the touch of the harbor when they lost the rest of the country. And Debbie uh, spoke about the educational opportunities of lost New Jersey. And Paul, you talked about shipping baselines problem. Uh, you know, we talk about oysters being a keystone species ecologically, although some argue that they're really not, they're really just a dominant species. But should we view them as, a, you know, as an educational keystone species? Are they really the, the creature we should be riding to get the public interested in the ecology of the harbor again, regardless of whether or not it really makes a difference in water quality or, or ecology in the real sense? <laughs> Uh, well, you got to start somewhere, um, and uh, you know, what are the other candidates out there that we can consider? Um, certainly, a striped bass is a great one, and that one's come back. Um, uh, the sturgeon would be a good one if there were more of them. Um, but I think that there are enough um, sort of differences in what people are drawn to for at least oysters to be, you know, one of the sweet. Um, I mean, and in fact, you know, when we talk about restoring New York Harbor, we need to restore, you know, all uh, levels of the water column. And, uh, and I think there's a room for a confederation here where some people will back the oyster, others will back the, uh, the herring, and others will back the striper. So um, I, I certainly think it's a good one to push. Particularly, you can, because of the hands-on thing, too, is, I think, a big thing. Right. Um, you know, one great thing about the oysters, they kind of stay where they put. Um, and so it was very easy for um, the students to have what we call the oyster gardeners, which is a net of about 100 more oysters that they float off of their bulkhead or their beach in New York Bay or wherever. And then they consistently go down to that they measure the growth of the oyster, they measure 
measure the survivability. Um, it incorporates math, science, ecology, and it's a consistent uh, experiment that they can have um, readily available to them over the course of the school year. And then what we were doing is taking the oysters placing them on our reefs, which they would make a field trip down, and they actually rode out in like an old oyster skiff um, to place them on our reefs in, in Shrewsbury. So I, I totally agree we need a whole suite of ecosystem restoration, but the oyster, um, as opposed to you know the mussel or the hard clam, which doesn't have the habitat for you know creation, um, really worked well in the, especially in the urban Yeah, that's the Jersey DEP. <laughs> 